I've been playing with just one family in the same save on my Twitch channel for a really long time. Like we're pushing 11 generations in this Sim save. And I was thinking this could kind of be a fun video to go and explore what happens to the Sims after 10 generations. Because obviously in that time, a lot changes. And honestly, aside from just like my own Sims gameplay, a lot has changed just in the Sims since I started this family. I first made them in April of 2021. And since then two game packs have come out, Dream Home Decorator and the new wedding pack. We got a new expansion pack, Cottage Living. We got a lot of kits and we got some pretty huge updates most recently obviously story progression has been added to the game but honestly the game was pretty different when I first started playing so it's kind of fun to look back on all the things that have changed so this my friends is the Potts family I first started with Piper a very 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 long time ago and ever since the family has continued to grow and grow and grow all the way down to what is now the 11th generation now obviously most of these sims are long dead they've all pretty much died off of old age although some have had more tragic ends. I'll get to that. But I've been playing on this same lot with the same family this whole time. I just keep building new houses. Usually with legacy challenges like this, you wouldn't live on a 30 by 20 lot and you'd probably have more money by now. But because I've been playing on short lifespan and also a lot of my heirs have met sort of um, premature deaths, I'm not exactly that rich. You might be horrified to know that my house is actually only worth 108,000 simoleons, and I guess I've got like 10,000 on me, but you'd also probably assume that over, you know, 11 generations I'd have more than like 120k. So let's talk about that, because usually by this point you'd have a lot more money. There's a few reasons that I don't. Number one, I keep bulldozing the lot, and so the items depreciate in value, and when I sell them they sell for less than I bought them for. That's not the sole reason that the house is as cheap as it is, but that's part of it. Like, for example, right now, this house is worth 108k on the gallery, but if I were to bulldoze it, I'd only get 93k. So you lose a fair bit of money to depreciation. But also, because I'm playing on short lifespan, your sims don't always work as long as they might if you were playing with, like, sims living on regular or long lifespan. And also, my sims tend to have exceptionally short lifespans, as you may be getting from, from this, my graveyard here in the front yard. So let me, let me break this down for you. Now, obviously I've been playing for like 10 generations. So a lot of these Sims just died of old age. There's a lot of pet gravestones. There's actually 14 pet gravestones, plus one fake gravestone for a pet whose grave I didn't get because it like disappeared. So those 15 pets, obviously I didn't kill them or like murder them or anything. They just died of old age, okay? It's just been a long time. So I've gone through a lot of them. That sounds really bad, but that you get it. I also have done a little bit of uh, eliminating of people that I don't like. For example, yesterday, literally yesterday in real life, I had two Sims die. One, this girl's dad died. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was really old though. I didn't kill him. He died of old age. But also, before he died, some random sim that I didn't know called him up and was like, hey, you want to go on a date? And I was like, why are you trying to steal Goopy? His name was Goopy. And so I killed her. She was trying to cheat with my husband, so I had to do something. So uh, basically I added her to my household and had her jump into this pond a lot of times until she died. This is a piranha pond. Now, you may not know this, but your sims can die in here, in these piranha ponds. And you'll notice this is quite a theme of my gameplay. I would be willing to bet that like a third of these graves <laughs> died in that pond. I don't know if you remember, but on the family tree, do you know how it says that the first sim, Piper, died by drowning? Oh my God. This is the most ridiculous story. Basically, when I first started the legacy, she was still a young adult. She had like three kids. They were all born, but they were really young. They were all toddlers. She was a lawyer. She was doing pretty well. I mean, not that well, because she had like just started out. I was talking on my stream about how this pond exists. It's a pond from Get Famous. You can actually stock it with like sharks and stuff if you want to. You've kind of got options. I usually put piranhas in there. And I was trying to explain how you can die in this pond, but I'd never actually seen it happen. Like I had just heard you could die in the pond, but despite all of my efforts, it's never worked. And I was like, look, watch this besties. I'll place the pond down. I'll have her jump in and then she won't die. Kind of just joking around thinking I'd, you know, show you how it doesn't work. Well, first try, she jumped in one time, instantly dead. I killed the first heir, the founder of my legacy in a pond full of piranhas. Here's a clip of that happening. Stock it with... <sighs> I don't have enough money for sharks. I'm gonna add piranhas then. Yay! Oh, my nose. No, it said sprites, not spiders. Oh, it's deep. What? What? How did that happen so fast? I've never seen that one so fast. I was doing it as a joke. I didn't know she was gonna die that fast. Oh my God. It 
it was actually unbelievable. So that Sim had three kids, right? The middle child goes on to become the heir. His name was Peter. Peter ends up getting married to this guy named Austin. Austin and Peter actually have three kids. I'm pretty sure there were twins involved. So at the time, they were a young couple, freshly married, and they had three toddlers. Three, all at once. I'm streaming. I'm joking around about how I killed his mom by accident in the pond. And I say to the stream, that was a complete fluke. The pond death is so rare. It has only happened to me once. It will never happen again. Watch this. I'll have him jump in and nothing will happen. What do you think happened? Oh, he died. Oh, he died first try too. by accident within the span of like a week as well in real life and the first two generations are just wiped out like that so the legacy was cursed from the beginning and after that happened I sort of just started embracing it and so after that point pretty much every generation has had at least one sim meet the pond hence my my collection of graves I also have done some like collecting for example I, I killed an alien sim there was some storyline to this this guy Clayton he was involved with the alien his sister was the heir of my legacy but when he was a teen I had him start dating people you know trying to meet people he met this wonderful lovely person called Lacey they ended up getting together turns out Lacey's an alien okay big red flag then Lacey tries to cheat on him with one of my ghosts like obviously my house is constantly being haunted I mean <laughs> as you can probably tell well Lacey in my household is flirting with the ghosts I said no 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 you are not flirting with my dead relatives that is messed up well she was pregnant at the time so I couldn't kill her I waited till she gave birth, sent Lacey to the pond as punishment for trying to flirt with my great-grandparents, because what's up with that? And then I kept, you know, raising the kid and everything. Well, Clayton, the brother of my sim, the father of the baby, you know, the one whose wife got killed in the pond, Clayton got bit by a rat. Now, I don't know if you knew about this, but you know this thing, like the rat thing from My First Pet Stuff? You can die from this. When you have one of those rodents, there's a chance of your sim getting bit by them, and when they get bit, there's a chance of them developing rabid rodent fever. It's pretty rare. I've only actually had it happen once and I play with rats a lot. You'd be kind of surprised. I've had like 15 rats in this family. They just keep dying and I keep getting new ones. It's really horrible. But anyway, I've never had a sim die from this rat disease before. Well, unfortunately, Clayton came down with the rat disease and I decided, you know what? It would be quite funny if he died of this. So I chose to not cure him. You can like research a cure on the computer and stuff. I just chose not to. And as they get sicker, they actually become contagious. So you have to watch out because your other sims could get sick too. And it even tells you they'll get like a mood lip being like three days until I die 24 hours until I die well I just locked him in his bedroom and waited until he died and, and then he died and I kept his grave and then raised his alien daughter as my own and that was the story of Clayton and the rats now his ghost frequently haunts my house and the ghost is in a rat costume at all times and it's like foaming green at the mouth it's kind of gross but it's always good to see him you know also a lot of these graves are not actually my graves like I've done some collecting of graves that I've seen in the town for example you know when you go to the bar and there's just like some old person and then they drop dead and then you have to wait and everybody gets sad. Well, whenever that happens, I usually bring the grave home with me. I probably had that happen like four or five times. And I've also just found graves places. Like once I went to the land grab's house and the land grab graves were just there. So I, I took them and I brought them home with me and put them here. So I've kind of been collecting. I didn't kill everybody here. I do have one other sort of funny story from an old generation. This is from Gen 5. So this was the heir at the time. His name was Carson. And Carson was married to this guy called Trent. They were a pretty cute couple. They ended up having twins together. But Carson sort of sucked, like he was a mean guy. He used to like argue all the time. So he and Trent ended up getting divorced. Honestly, good for Trent, get away from this horrible man. I don't blame you. They had been kind of broken up for a while. And then eventually Carson meets this new guy called Martin. And I was like, oh my God, Martin's so nice. He's pretty cute. Let's, let's date Martin and see what happens. So I start dating him. I end up going into cast to check on Martin and like fix his outfits and stuff. And I discover that Martin has a daughter and that daughter's last name was Ethington. And I thought to myself, hmm, my ex-husband's last name is Ethington. So that's interesting. Turns out, you know my ex-husband, Trent? Yeah, his little sister, Holly is the daughter of my new husband. So what did I do? First, I broke Trent's heart, ruined his life, and then 
I went and dated his stepdad. Oh my god. And then at the time, Holly was young, so like, I moved her into my household and raised her. I was like, proper tormenting this Trent guy, and I didn't even know. Like, I wasn't trying to date his stepdad on purpose. I didn't know he was related to him. I, how was I to know? Because at the time, Trent's mom was dead. Like, this lady was long gone. But how was I to know that my husband, Trent's mom, ended up getting with Martin, having a kid, and then dying? So then I got with Martin. Oh, it was bad. It was really bad. It was so funny when I realized who he was, though. You, like, saw my face on stream be like, now, wait a minute, Ethington. My husband's name is Ethington. <laughs> but it was, it was quite funny. I, I really enjoyed that moment. Honestly, Trent, I'm, I'm sorry that I did that to you. I'm sorry that I crushed your little heart and then dated your stepdad. That was rude. That was rude. It's like I'm trying to ruin your life. But I wasn't. I swear it was an accident. Over the years, I've also killed pretty much every vampire in town. You can see that I killed Lilith. I killed Vlad. And I also killed this sim called Renesmee Potts. Um, she was a vampire too. I had a baby with Caleb. I actually had two babies with Caleb. You know, like this sim Lilith's brother. He's not dead. He's, he's made it out alive. Anyway, I had twins with him by accident. One was a vampire, one wasn't. And I didn't really want to have a vampire. So I didn't really make much of an effort to bring her inside when it was sunny. I will say that when she actually died, it was 8 p.m. and winter time. So how did she die in the sun? The sun had set. Okay, it was dark and like eight o'clock at night. I don't agree with the game's decision to burn her up, but whatever, she's gone. I didn't like try and kill her. I just didn't try and bring her inside. You know, like we traveled to a new lot. I went inside and she didn't come. That's not my problem. So anyway, she's gone too. But that's enough about the death of this family because that is kind of the major theme, but it isn't the only thing we do, okay? I think it'd be fun to show you like the heirs over the years because honestly, my Sims have turned out really cute considering how far into the legacy we are because usually, by this point, like, it's not looking good. The jeans are all messed up, but we got lucky. So this Sim Barry is the Gen 10 Sim. She's in her sleepwear, which is unhelpful. Hang on. There you go. This Sim Barry is the Gen 10 Sim. And the reason her name is Barry is because I want to play Not So Barry next, but I want to use the same save. So I figured her kids could be like the Gen 1 Not So Barry Sims. That's why this Sim exists. It's because she's going to start Not So Barry, which by the way is a challenge that I wrote. If you didn't know that, hey, I'll link it down below, but it's kind of a fun legacy challenge. Each generation is kind of like themed after a different color. The first one is mint. And they have like specific rules for each generation, like different traits and skills you need to do and have. Anyway, we're going to do that next, but this video is about the past, not the future. Anyway, I thought it would be kind of fun to compare like the gen 10 and 11 sims to the gen 1 sim. Oh my god. Look at how many hot dogs are in my library. That's horrible. But this sim here, Piper, was my original legacy sim. You know, the one that uh, met an untimely fate in the pond by accident. This was her. And you know what? I think she looks a lot like her great 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 grandkids. Here's Piper, here's Barry, and then here's Flossie who didn't have blue eyes. She had green eyes, but I changed them to blue because it was more minty. But honestly, those jeans are pretty strong. It kind of stayed the same way. I will say that my Sims have not looked like this the whole time. We've kind of gone back to looking like her again because I ended up marrying and then killing a guy descended from the mayor in Cottage Living. You know the mayor's son, the grocer? He had a son. That Sim's name was Harvey. I had kids with him a few generations ago and they look a lot like him. Like all of the kids have very strong Harvey jeans. This was Gen 8. Looking back on this, it looks a bit messy, but this was Gen 8. This sim here, Poppy, was the heir. Gen 7, I'm noticing now there were a lot of ghosts in this family. Also, Gen 7 was wild. Basically, um, okay, so this sim and this ghost, they're twins. Their names were Holly and Eugene. Now, Holly had a sort of troubled life. Basically, when she aged up from a teen into a young adult, she died of embarrassment, and then I had to plead for her life to bring her back, hence why she's Holly 4.1. The point one being that I came back to life, the four being that she was the fourth Holly in the family. There was loads of Hollies, even Hollies that I didn't name. Remember Martin, that like stepdad I married by accident? His kid was called Holly. I didn't know that. I didn't name her. She was like a random sim. Anyway, lots of Hollies, so I named her after them. But when she was a teen, I was trying to decide between her and her twin brother Eugene, like, for who should be the heir. And so I decided to do this like battle to the death thing where I had them both jump into the pond at the same time repeatedly until one of them died. And then the one that survived would be the heir. I know it was wacky, okay? Anyway, Holly survived that. So Holly became the heir, Eugene died. And I ended up adding him back to my household as a ghost. And then I spent Holly's entire life trying to create Ambrosia to bring him back to life, which I did do. And Eugene did live on. 
after the fact. So that was Gen 7. This was Gen 6, but clearly before the twins were born and then died. <laughs> but that was who their parents were. Oh, here's Gen 5! This is that alien baby, remember? Remember her? So Carson, the guy who ended up marrying his ex-husband's stepdad, this was him as a teen and his little sister, who was actually his cousin, but like his mom raised her after, you know, her parents died from rat diseases and whatnot. That's them when they were young. Oh, and this is them even younger! Look, when they were still only toddlers! That's so cute! I liked this sim. Her name was Clayla. Kind of like Clay Pot, because their last name is Potts, but like Kayla because my name is Kayla. Anyway, she's dead too. I didn't kill her or anything. She died of old age. There's Clayla and her dad and her little brother. Now you can see that single dad, um, because... I probably killed his spouse. My bad. My bad. You know how in Gen 2 the heir died because I put him in the pond by accident trying to show off how he wouldn't die and then the dad had to raise the rest of his kids by himself? Yeah, this is him, the single dad Austin, whose husband died in the pond because of me, and his four teens. And this was Gen 1 before I killed her, my dear legacy founder who started it all. Now you might not care about any of this, but it's kind of fun for me to like walk back down memory lane. But you know what? It's kind of fun to go back and compare how the Sims have grown up and changed over the years. I just deleted Piper again because I don't want her to be in the household. I can't bring back the great 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 grandma at this point. So that, my friends, is what happens to the Sims after 10 generations. This is probably like my favorite Sims family I've ever played with. That's not true. I have one that I'm playing on YouTube as well and I, I also feel very strongly about those Sims. But if you thought my YouTube legacy was wild, uh, you're in for a real treat with this one on Twitch. I can link for you down below the like YouTube playlist of this because I post all of these live streams onto my second channel, More Simsy, so if you want to go back and watch them, there's like hours and hours and hours of content, but if that interests you, I can link it for you. And if you want to watch like a more cut down series with like 20 minute episodes instead, I have a different legacy called the Bell Family that I play here on my YouTube channel and I can link that down below for you too. And now my new Not So Berry Sim is a teen. This is the Gen 11 heir. So she's gonna start the Not So Berry Challenge. So I've got like a whole load of fun plans coming up on my Twitch channel. So if you want to watch those things, now is a pretty good time to join in because we're starting a new thing. So I can link my Twitch streams down below for you too. My name's just Lil Simsy on there. Same as YouTube. Easy to find. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to just ramble about my dead sims for a while. This was great fun for me. And I'm curious, in the comments, can you tell me like some of your wildest sim stories? I love hearing about this kind of thing. Like that whole Martin married my stepdad business is so funny to me. Has that happened to you or like anything similar happened to you? Because I want to hear about it in the comments. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Maybe leave a like. I don't know. And with that being said, I will catch you all tomorrow. Bye everybody. Also, to any of you who actually watch the series on Twitch, what was your favorite part? I'm curious to hear in the comments, and I bet it's gonna be funny because there's been a lot of wild stuff that's happened. <laughs>